Whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. Henry Ford. Hey guys, it's Isabel. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about how to manifest effortlessly. Now I have gotten to the point in my spiritual journey and my law of attraction journey where I don't have to consciously think or do a routine to manifest great things into my life. I am able to attract wonderful, positive things without even trying, without even consciously putting in the effort to do so. And you know those type of people where you see them and they're living amazing, abundant lifestyles, and it just seems like everything just comes effortlessly to them. They attract positive people and outcomes and things. It is definitely a mindset that has to be cultivated. You too can be one of these people. You too can be a person that just literally exists and manifests amazing things into their lives. I want to stress that even though recently my life, these past few months, whatever, hasn't been ideal, it hasn't been as great as other points in my life where I am manifesting amazing things that are blowing my mind, how amazing they are, things that I've always wanted. I am manifesting right now and I have manifested within these last few weeks some incredible things which I'll probably make a video on when things just kind of complete themselves. It's crazy because right now my vibration isn't as high as it's been in the past and the circumstances in my life are definitely a lot more stressful than any time before. I've definitely studied my life recently and how all these wonderful things have come into my life without me really trying or really forcing myself to be positive. This has led me to one conclusion and that is that manifestation in and of itself is actually very, very simple. And I've learned this within the past five years that I've been aware of what the law of attraction is and aware of this infinite power we all have. And even before I knew about the law of attraction, which kind of backs up my argument and my theory, is that I used to manifest things and people without wanting to, without even knowing what the law of attraction even was, without even knowing that existed. I used to use the law of attraction and it used to work for me so well. I was able to manifest people and things without even knowing that I was doing it. So what I believe is that you don't have to consciously think anything in order for something to be manifested. It's all about your subconscious mind, that mind that comes to life when you're asleep and you're dreaming. Even your feelings are tied to your subconscious. While our conscious thoughts and feelings change every single day, change every hour, change constantly, your subconscious mind is a little bit more set in stone, but it is not completely permanent. It can be changed, it can be rewired, it can be amplified, it can be minimized, it can be cultivated. So keeping these things in mind, we realize that manifestation is not so much about what you're feeling and what you're going through right now in life. That is not necessarily what's going to keep coming up. Yes, what you focus on is going to gain more energy over your life. So if you keep focusing on the negative, that is what will keep showing up. However, your subconscious has way more to do with manifestation than your conscious thoughts and feelings right now in the moment. Or what you're aware of right now in the moment is not necessarily as powerful as your subconscious. So while our conscious mind can affect our subconscious and if you're constantly feeling or thinking the same thing over and over again you will start to shift and change your subconscious understand that just because you're going through a hard time in life does not mean that you can't manifest amazing wonderful abundance happiness joy health and peace right now so I have three tips or three steps for you to take in order to become a powerful manifester an effortless manifester even when you're life right now is not doing so well, even if you're not feeling so great, does not mean that you can't manifest. That's a misconception that I want to break down, that you have to be feeling absolutely great and wonderful in order to manifest wonderful things. I don't think that's true. Through my personal experience, I don't believe it's true, at least for me. Let's get on with my three steps to being an effortless manifester. Step number one is to rewrite or rewire your subconscious. So if you're a person that feels like you can't manifest very easily or you can't even manifest small things, it's probably because you have sub 
subconscious limiting beliefs that are blocking you. And these limiting beliefs, if you have them and they're strong enough and powerful enough, they will block anyone. Doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter what your current circumstances in your life are. If you have those limiting beliefs stopping you, no matter how happy you may feel right now, you're not gonna be able to manifest good and positive things. You might be able to manifest just not the stuff that we want, the nasty negative stuff that keeps coming up over and over and over again and reinforcing these subconscious limiting beliefs. So for those of you who don't know what subconscious limiting beliefs are, I'm gonna give you my definition. Subconscious limiting beliefs are basically negative thoughts, feelings and ideas that were instilled in us by influential people in our lives. So parents, teachers, your partner, friends, or experiences that keep us from going after goals, limit us, or keep us in fear. So fear is a subconscious limiting belief. If you live your life fear-based, always trying to minimize risk instead of just going for it and jumping into risk and doing things that you're afraid to do, then you're going to keep reinforcing your subconscious limiting beliefs. So this could also be when somebody tells us something about ourselves or something negative about us and we take it really personally and we internalize it, we keep it and we tell ourselves that this is us, that this is a part of us and we allow it to be a part of us that can become a subconscious limiting beliefs it's kind of like in the book the four agreements where he talks about how you should be impeccable with your word that is one of the four agreements and that is the one that really stuck to me because our words are like a magic spell if somebody comes over and tells a student when they're five or six or ten years old that they are never going to amount to anything that they're going to work in fast food restaurants I mean there's really nothing wrong with working in fast food restaurants but imagine your teacher you're trying to succeed in a teacher comes and tells you that from a young age, it's going to be programmed into your mind, especially since a child's brain is so malleable. So that's going to be programmed into this child's brain and all their life they're going to grow up thinking that they're no better, that they cannot be better than working in fast food. They can't go to college, they can't become a lawyer or a doctor or whatever they wish to be because this teacher put in their mind and they don't even realize it. They probably don't even remember it, but it was just so traumatizing and it hit them so hard as a child that it just naturally became part of their story and they allowed it to become their story. But the good thing is that when you become aware of your subconscious limiting beliefs, you can begin to rewrite them. Your subconscious beliefs don't have to be limiting and we can actually rewire these beliefs into making them positive or making them positive subconscious beliefs. I have a lot of positive subconscious beliefs. Now, I have two videos on my channel that you guys are more than welcome to check out. I have one on rewiring your subconscious limiting beliefs and it actually goes way more into depth than I will in this video for the sake of time. So please go check it out. I did it, I think, last year, so it should still help you guys. And then check out my video I did last week on trusting the universe. And I'm explaining in that video what my mindset is, how I believe everything's rigged in my favor. So I have very good and positive subconscious beliefs, but I also do have some negative limiting beliefs and that's okay. I think it's normal, it's human. And sometimes they do come up and when they come up again, I have to keep fighting them, keep going after them. And I have to keep proving them wrong so that I can build something new. So I have a little exercise for you guys, which I have recently been doing and I felt like it has helped me a lot. And I realized that this exercise would help me after I started listening to my own podcast back. And usually I don't rewatch my videos. Usually I don't listen to my podcast episodes once I've recorded them and I put them out there. I kind of just let them float out into the universe and let them go and see what they do. I don't really try to listen to them and criticize myself if that makes sense. Recently I have noticed that I listen to them back and I'm like, wow, that's actually really resonating with me and it sounds so comforting because it's coming from my own voice, it's coming from myself and it's almost like I'm talking to myself, which I am when I'm recording a podcast, I'm literally talking just a mic and me. But I realized how powerful it is to hear yourself say these things and how it ingrains in your mind, almost like by repetition. Repetition is so important and I realized that whenever I was young or I was in school, one of my favorite ways to learn something was through repetition that was probably one of the key components to me being able to learn a lot of information. So an exercise I would implore you to do if you find that you have subconscious limiting beliefs, whether it's about money, whether it's about your abilities, whether it's about your life, whether it's about passions, whether it's about chasing your dreams. And subconscious limiting beliefs can be anything from you're not good enough, you were never rich so you'll never be rich, your parents were poor so you'll never be able to make money, nobody in your family is good at math so you're not good at math. Things like that, those are all limiting 
limiting beliefs, anything negative that you find keeps coming up in your brain, keeps coming up in your life, kind of like that rock you keep tripping over. Those are limiting beliefs. So it's important to identify them and then start to rewrite them. When I rewrite my subconscious limiting beliefs, I usually rewrite them as the exact opposite as they say. So if a limiting belief you have is I'm not good with money, I put I am very great with money, I live in abundance and money is always available to me. So what I want you to do is get your phone, go to your voice memos and record yourself saying your positive affirmations or your new rewritten subconscious story. Here's an example. Hello, Isabel. You will have a wonderful, amazing day today. And today I want to remind you, just like every single day, you are infinite. You are intelligent. You are strong and invincible. And you can take anything that life throws your way. You guys get the idea now. You can do this with Anything. Even creating a to-do list this way makes things so much more relaxing because it's like you're talking to yourself and it's just you and your voice and nothing else to get in between, nothing to cloud your thoughts or whatever. It's just literally between you and you, you and your subconscious, you and your mind. And it's absolutely empowering. I love doing this. And all you do is listen to this every morning. I put my headphones on, I put it up all the way. And as I'm doing my chores, as I'm making my bed, as I'm getting ready, whatever, I am listening to this and I am repeating them back to myself and I listen to it as many times and you can do the same positive affirmations every single day. You don't have to change it. If you feel like changing it up or making a recording solely for what you're going through at the moment, do it. It's so empowering and it's such an easy trick. You can even record yourself on a tape recorder. It's so powerful and effective. So I highly recommend you implement this exercise into your morning routines or your night routines before you go to sleep it could be any positive affirmations you want it could be your subconscious limiting beliefs written in reverse so in a positive sense and that way listening to this every day through repetition your mind will start picking it up through your conscious mind and then at night when you go to sleep it's gonna reiterate in your sleep you can listen to it in your sleep if you'd like and that is how you slowly keep rewiring your subconscious beliefs and also what's important is taking action behind these new positive affirmations so if you want to start feeling powerful, do things that make you feel powerful. If you want to feel intelligent, start honing in on your intelligence, working on your intelligence and strengthening your qualities. Always put action behind every single belief or every single word or affirmation so that it will be ingrained in stone because just listening is going to take you a big step forward, but it's the action that's going to propel you to new places that you never even imagined. I recommend that you check out those two videos I mentioned. I will link them down below as well, just in case any of you guys have any questions over this. Now, tip number two is to take care of yourself. I know this sounds cliche. I know this has been repeated in so many ways, but honestly, guys, self-care, taking care of our body, our mind, and our spirit is so very important because even if you're going through tough times, if you're making sure you're eating right, drinking enough water, fresh fruits and veggies, doing your skincare routine, washing your hair, staying on top of just your physical self as well as your mental self. It's important to be more in tune with your body. It's very important to be in tune with yourself. So listen to your body. Listen to what it tells you. Are you overworking yourself? Are you underworking yourself? Are you being too lazy? Are you being complacent? And just listening to your body, making sure your body is doing well, doesn't matter what it looks like, doesn't matter any of that. Just how you're feeling, that is so very important. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to have the perfect body or the perfect mindset in order to manifest, but just loving what you have, loving yourself for what you are, not exactly for where you will be or what you can become, but loving yourself as you are right now and loving your body as it is right now, loving your imperfections, make them perfections, make them your superpower. I think that's so important, but the key, the most fundamental thing of taking care of your mind and body is to eat well, guys. Don't eat so much fast food, processed food, things like that that are gonna make you feel bad. Eat stuff that is made to nourish your body, to nourish your brain, and support your bodily functions is very important, very key, because if your body's not feeling too great, your vibration's gonna be really, really low. So just be more conscious of what you're putting into your mind, into your body, into your spirit, into your soul, both physically and non-physical. These little things, they might seem like footnotes, but 
These things are very, very important. You don't have to look perfect. You don't have to be perfect. Just make sure that you're feeling good. When I have felt bad about my body, when I treated my body wrong or I fed it the wrong foods, I was not manifesting anything. But now that I'm eating a more whole foods diet, I'm a vegan. I eat very, very clean now. I eat lots of fresh fruits and veggies. I'm not restricting myself, but I am allowing myself to eat until I'm full, not overindulging, not restricting anything, just eating what feels right for me and doing what feels right for me exercise wise. And I have found that has just made me feel so much more confident about myself and made me feel just like I'm on top of the world and I can do anything and anything is possible. So take care of your body, your mind, and your spirit. And third is to stay present. It's so important to enjoy the process of your life the way it is going right now. Enjoy the process of your goals, of reaching your goals, instead of wishing for everything to be here all at once. And something I talked about in my last podcast episode was about being patient and how patience will allow you to build and create things more consciously and better for yourself in the long run and will contribute to having less anxiety about your life and yourself. If you're patient and trust the process and enjoy where you are in life right now, even if everything is going wrong or it's not perfect because life will never be perfect, but even if you're not at the ideal place of your life right now, enjoy it. Stop thinking joy and happiness and fulfillment are all in the future. Once you get this much money or you're able to live here or have this kind of partner or have this kind of job, then you can be happy. No, practice being happy right now in this moment because you have plenty to be happy about. You have plenty to be grateful for. Enjoy where you are right now in life. Even if it's not ideal, it's simple. Understand that where you are right now is exactly where you need to be. Be grateful now for everything you have in your life right now. Even if it doesn't seem like a big deal, even for the smallest thing, be grateful for everything you have in your life right now. Make gratitude lists, list all the things you're grateful for, spend time with the people you care about, with the people you love, with positive uplifting people that will make you laugh, that will make you excited about life. Your happiness is not found elsewhere or in external factors, it's all created within. Not necessarily found when you accomplish something. A lot of the times, the fulfillment and the growth and the happiness comes from trying to reach a goal from all that long process from that journey rather than getting there rather than accomplishing it it's the work you put behind that goal that is fulfilling to you that feels good when you have a goal and you're working towards it that is the key to happiness and it doesn't even have to be a goal it's just enjoying your life right now, everything adds up to something bigger. And why being present is so important in manifesting something is because being present, being truly in the moment, either through meditation or just smiling more in the moment or enjoying your life in the moment or really submerging yourself in the moment or just practicing gratitude for what you have in the moment will equate to you feeling good. And we all know that when you feel good, that is when you're able to manifest. So if you're always in the moment, you're always feeling good. Now being in the moment is so much more than just being aware of your surroundings or what's going on in the present moment, but it's also being able to take a step back and be at peace because peace is created within, happiness is created within. If you're able to sustain that for long enough, no matter what difficulties you may go through in life, you won't be full of anxiety, you'll be more calm, you'll have a clearer vision and a clearer mind and when you do have to look ahead, it will be in a positive sense. So you'll be manifesting, thinking of the future, thinking of all the wonderful things coming to you in the future, you will manifest that. So stay in the present moment. Don't get stuck in the past. Don't look too far into the future. See what you have now, what you can do now. Appreciate this moment in your life and you'll see how the universe will reward you with more things to appreciate right now in this moment. And you're not worried about the future. You're not worrying about manifesting because if you worry about manifesting, if you worry about the future, you're also blocking yourself because fear and worry and lack will stop you. So if you're living right now and even if things aren't perfect but you're constantly living in abundance because you choose it, that is what you will attract into your life and it'll happen without you even wanting to. I live in the moment, I'm grateful in the moment, I'm doing what I can right now with what I have. So the future doesn't seem scary. It's coming to me and it has come to me in so many incredible ways. So that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed these tips and please let me know what have you found allows you 
to manifest easily and simply and effortlessly into your life if you feel that you have gotten into that point in your journey. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I love reading all of you guys' comments, even if I don't get to respond. I'm so grateful to all of you who constantly do send me messages and comment things. I love hearing from you guys. You guys are my biggest inspiration. So. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I'm so grateful for each and every one of you. So if you guys like this content, if you like this video, please be sure to hit thumbs up and subscribe. Please be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so that you're notified to be part of the notification squad to know when I upload next. And also check out my podcast, Taking Back Your Power. The link is always down below in the description and it goes live every single Monday. Also follow me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter. Links are always down below in the description. I love you guys so very much. Always remember, no matter what you may be going through, no matter who you may be in this life, no matter what you look like, your true beauty, your true worth, and your true power always come from within. I love you guys, and I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.